Good evening, everyone. We're going to be having a fellowship call here in about 15 to 20 minutes. We actually start at 6 o'clock. And so I'm just kind of coming on board and kind of getting everything set up for that call. I think it'll be a very uh, edifying call. We're going to have Brother Carl Roberts and Brother uh, Mark Kennedy. Welcome aboard, John Kelly. Good to see you. So we're going to have a fellowship call tonight. I think it'll be very enjoyable uh, dialogue and conversation. The purpose of this call is really a people of like faith to build we, uh, one another up in the faith of Jesus Christ. And uh, we are also going to be on TalkShoe, uh, a platform where people can call in and be a part of the call. And uh, I'll wait till a few more people get on to announce the phone number and the call uh, ID number as well as your passcode if you want to call in. I think you'll find it very interesting conversation. Brother Mark Kennedy and Brother Carl Roberts uh, will be uh, hosting that call. I get to sit in the corner tonight, thank goodness. Every once in a while I like to just kind of be on the sidelines, so to speak. Uh, we do 12 broadcasts a week, and so it gets a little bit, uh, uh, sometimes I get on input overload, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, we're just kind of getting things uh, situated here. Uh, we cannot get clearance to go into talk show until 545. So, um, John, you're the first one on board, and Ganji Ezra, you're the second on board. Welcome aboard this evening. Um yeah, we're going to have a good time of fellowship together, edification, building uh, each other up in the most holy faith of Christ. And my wife just walked in. Hi, Rosette. And uh, we want to welcome all of our women folk, too. Now, we don't, uh, we don't have women teaching <laughs> because we don't believe it's biblical, but women are... Um, we're all leveled in Christ as far as uh, our position in Christ. And uh, Alan Taylor, welcome aboard. Good to have you aboard. Uh, I'm going to be welcoming Babs Roberts. That's Brother Carl Roberts' wife. Um, Brother Carl Roberts and Brother Mark Kennedy will be joining us shortly, hopefully. And what's the topic for tonight? Well, I'm going to let Carl and Mark established that tonight. I'm going to sit on the sidelines and kind of just twiddle my thumbs. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Benny Green. Glad to have you with us tonight. And um, hope you all are getting ready for a, a restful weekend. Um, this is TGIT. <laughs> Thank God it's Thursday, almost Friday, right? Um yeah so by way of announcements i just posted on facebook we are planning a get together here in pineville missouri on the top of the ozark mountains um and that's going to take place on march april 6th 7th and 8th and so if you want to come you're welcome we have um 18 available slots <laughs> left <laughs> yeah, it's about how many we can accommodate. Um, we are going to have some special speakers that are going to come and speak to us. Brother Edward Henry has agreed to come. Uh, Brother Mark Kennedy has agreed to come. And Brother Carl Roberts has agreed to come if he can get time off from his work. And it's, um, he, that's a big, big thing with him. He's a, a boat captain on the river. And so he's on, you know, he's, he has to be there at certain times. Um, okay, it's 5.42. we got three minutes before I can go over to talk to you. Uh, I want everybody to know I have my coffee here tonight with me. <laughs> and uh, I do not, I do not uh, get paid for pushing Folgers Black Silk Coffee. I just like it, okay? If you've never tried it. Go try it. Pick up some black silk Folgers coffee and see if what I'm telling you is not. It's not real expensive. It's not a. It's not a uh, what they call it, uh, high dollar coffee. It's uh, 
anyway, um, let's see. 543, I'll be right back with you. I'm going to go and see if we can get checked in on the other side of where it talks you here. Still just a couple minutes early. Um, so we'll just kind of hang loose here for a couple minutes. Monday night, uh, Edward Henry is going to be speaking to us again on our talk show on Monday night, next Monday night, 20, I think that's the 20, uh, 25th. He's going to be talking about what does it mean to be a Berean? What does it mean to be a Berean? What is involved in that? And also, what does it, what all, what does it entail to have a teachable spirit? Wow, that's, that's one I need. <laughs> anyway, Glenda Busby Trotter, welcome aboard. Benny Green, welcome aboard. Alan Taylor, Ganji Ezra, John Kelly, Bob Henry, got a good group with us tonight. Glad to see everybody on board. You know, it's nice that we have this format where we can come together as fellow believers in Christ and we can agree on the Biblical concepts of the faith. Welcome aboard, Leon Kennedy. Good to see you. Um, I feel like I'm getting to know some of you folks because I see your postings. I see Alan Taylor's postings on Facebook. Um, a lot of good postings, Alan. Um, I see um, Leon, I see your postings. And, you know, we all have um, come from different positions in life. I had a friend of mine tell me, we, God has put us all in different rooms. <laughs> We're all in different rooms. But you know what? We can, we can definitely learn from each other. We can definitely learn from each other. Let's see if I can go over and get this call going here. Welcome to Talk Show. Please enter the show ID. Enter your PIN followed by the pound. You are joining the online studio. You are unmuted and can speak with the host. Now, if any of, if any of you guys want to call in and be a part of the live program, I can tell you how to do that. Uh, believe me, I can tell you how to how to get in get in the get on board. Uh, basically, what you would need to do is you would need to either uh, go to the link on Facebook. I provide the link there in the announcement of tonight's call, and you can go in on your computer. Or if you want to actually talk live on the program, you can go to um, uh, the phone number six zero five five six two. 0444. You might want to write that down for future reference. 605 562 0444. And when it asks you for the call ID number, I can give that to you as well. <laughs> the call ID number is 140414. I'll give that to you again. The call ID number is 140414. Now, if you, um, uh, it'll ask you for your passcode, and the passcode is the same for all of our guests. The passcode is one and the pound sign, and you will be with us then. So I want to invite all those on Facebook, if you have, if you want to be a, more of an active participant rather than just a, a observer or a listener, uh, that's your ticket to the program. Now I can see that um, Brother Carl Roberts is very faithful. He's always on time, almost always here and ready and available. And I've just unmuted his mic. 
And I get to sit on the sidelines tonight, and Brother Carl and Brother Mark are going to do the moderating, and I can just sit on the in the corner, hopefully, and, and twiddle my thumbs. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Carl. There's, I will let you know uh, before I do that. Let me just read off to you all the guests that are with us on Facebook. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't turn it all over to me now. You're a lot better at moderating and hosting than I could ever be. Okay. Well, we've got we've got a really nice group of guests tonight. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, Pedro Calavandico, my good friend. Uh, Brother Leon Kennedy. Oh, they're all good friends. Bob Henry, Glory Busby Trotter, Benny Green, Alan Taylor, Ganji Esri. Uh, and now I'm blocked from seeing the people that came on first. John Kelly. And there's, see here, a couple others that I can't see. Um, but we've got a really good group that has already jumped on board. So um, the reason they're, they're so interested, they saw I was not going to be the main spokesman tonight. I was going to have two other people do the call. So they decided they would come on board. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, come on, man. Anyway, Harold Ward is also with us. I used to know a Harold Ward, I think. It's maybe that's interesting uh, from way back. Um, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Carl, and I'll be watching for Mark, and when he comes on, I'll unmute his mic as well. So um, the program is in good hands with Brother Carl Roberts. Well, hello everybody. Uh, hope everybody's doing well this evening. I'm glad everybody's here on our Thursday night fellowship. Uh, me and Bob are here in East Tennessee. And it's still raining. It started raining here about, I think it was the day before yesterday. It let up. Um, so we just been, uh, I actually got off of work a couple of days early. So we just been sort of spending some time together and doing a little studying and we're glad to do with everybody tonight. We hope everybody's blessed. So, uh, is Brother Mark here yet? Uh, no, he's not on board yet. I'll tell you what, whenever he comes on board, I will uh, jump in and let you know. Okay. Um, well, I guess uh, I'd like to just address, um, you know, to you, Brother Larry, and tell you, you know, how much you know, you and your family mean to me and Babs and everybody on here listening as well, you know, thank you guys for welcoming us, you know, into the fellowship with open arms like you have. Um, and I know over the last couple of days that there's been been some interesting subjects come up for discussion and um, i just like to state publicly to maybe confirm if anybody had any questions about anything they had heard me say, you know, heard me say in an email recently that you know, I don't, uh, I mean, I believe that the Bible is our first and last and, you know, foremost authority for truth. I mean, I don't think that there's anything wrong with using other sources per se, if you understand and keep in mind that, you know, these sources most of the time are coming from, a, you know, coming from a secular worldview, and they're also coming from, you know, people that may be into some type of false religion, whether it's Roman Catholicism or Pentecostalism. So I don't want anybody to think that I was, you know, or I will, you know, or that I'm even qualified because, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace to pass judgment on someone else for copying a video and sending it out. You know, that just means for me, you know, and for my home, we just sort of try to, you know, to stay clear of stuff like that because um, it's just really easy to get caught up in something and then you're just sort of on your way with it and you're being led away from the word of God. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, like to, like to I'd like to, publicly. yeah, I'd like to jump in and say, I really respect you for your, your stand. Um, and, you know, I think uh, I learned from that. One of the things I learned is if I do post anything, uh, for historical significance, and and uh, by the way, that particular that Benjamin um, Friedman did that uh, speaking engagement in 1961, 
and it was so interesting because it was right you know we know that uh, john f kennedy was assassinated in 1963 but oh, it is a very interesting speech but i i learned something from carl you know i've i've learned one or two things from carl no i'm just kidding i've learned a lot more than that <laughs> Uh, I've learned a lot from I've, le I've learned a lot from Carl already, uh, and one of the things I have learned is whenever I post uh, anything that is not uh, the King James version of the Bible, I'm going to put a disclaimer on there that look, I'm posting this for the historical significance of the facts that are presented, but I in no way endorse. Uh, the theology of the speaker. Okay, I, I did. And by the way, you hear other people making uh, in in different programs. They'll make disclaimers like that as well. And and by the way, brother uh, uh, Mark Kennedy is the one that sent me an email suggesting we do that on anything that we send out that is not the Bible. Because uh, so, so Carl, we we do appreciate your stand on that. And I talked to brother Edward Kennedy, uh, Edward Henry today. And we had a really good conversation. Uh, there is a lot going on, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into all that tonight. But uh, it is important. Right. It is important uh, what we set forth as being truth. So, back to you, brother. I don't. I'm sure, brother um, Mark. Here's Mark right now, brother Mark. Let me see if I can, brother Mark. Are you now with us? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm here. All right, well, I'm going to go sit in the corner and shut up. Brother uh, Carl is on, so you guys have a good program. If you have any questions or whatever, feel free to yell at me. <laughs> very good, very good. Hello, Brother Carl. God bless you. Hey, Brother Martin. God bless you. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Have you been on, have you been on very long before I got here? I don't know, maybe five minutes or so. Well, Oh, maybe five or six minutes. That's all. Cool. cool. But you're still yeah. early, so I think it's like five minutes. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at the clock and I go, oh, it's time. Better go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can't wait to get here. You know, we always get here early because, I mean, I'm just so excited to get over here with, you know, other believers. And, you know, I'd also like to say to you guys and everybody listening that, you know, I'm aware of my personality, and I'm really not proud of it. I know that I can be loud at times, and the last thing that I want to be is loud and boisterous. I mean, I, I really just have a, because of the way that I was raised, I, you know, and, and I'm not trying to make excuses here, I just have a, a hatred, to be honest, and disdain, and, utter, and, I, and I utterly loathe Armenianism and free will works religion and Pentecostalism and charismaticism and, and and people that deny biblical cosmology, you know, when people deny the truth of God and unrighteousness, it really upsets me. I don't do a good job a lot of times. And so I want to make an apology publicly to the listeners and you guys as well if I have offended or been out of line or, you know, have been too loud because that's not how I want to come across and I, you know, I really want, you know, the people out there listening to understand that, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry if I have come across that way at any time. Brother Carl, what was the word you used in reference to your personality? I didn't catch that. Loud and boisterous. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I don't, I don't feel that way at all. I feel, I feel your contributions are very relevant and right on, and you always hit the nail right on the head. I, 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 I I feel that you're very relevant in everything you say. I concur. I I don't have any problem with anything that you've said, done, or otherwise. Now I may in the future, but up to this point, <laughs> I could say that you know what? I'm glad that you are strong in in your assertions, and I'm glad that you're not a wheelie mouth, feminized, uh, non gender identity person okay i'm glad that you're very strong yeah. <laughs> and forthright in what you say so you have my full support brother so just so you know i'm right there okay. with brother i agree because it, it demands a strong all the error 
and confusion out there demands a strong review. So, so I'm right with I'm right there with Larry, and, and we love you, brother Carl, and and you're right on the mark. Well, thanks a lot, brothers, and you know I love you guys too. And um, so, all right, well, great. So, like I said, I just want to get it off my chest. And so, where do you want to go from this point, brother Mark? You got anything? I have a couple oh. of things I like to tell you guys, but I'll just sort of let you go first and just sort of see what you got on your mind, brother Mark. Well, uh, we had a major news event today that I thought we could start off with, like for five or ten minutes. And I'm sure probably everybody knows what's going on by now. But this young man in Hollywood, well, he's a TV actor, and he's an African American homosexual man, and he's an actor on this uh, TV show that I've never even heard of. And it just came out and it hit the headlines today and, and about it. And, and the fake news media is freaking out. Uh -huh. And it's up to the highest corridors of democratic power, you know, Kamala Harris and, and that liar Al Sharpton. Right. They came of a, some kind of event or something and they were swarmed by the news media. And they, and they kept asking Kamala Harris, you know, can I get your reaction on this? Uh, situation with Jesse Smollett and and she said, thank you, have a good day, and they run to the car <laughs> and they get out of there. But this man, it's come out today that he paid $4,000 to two of his loser friends of his to wage a fake attack on him in Chicago and they they shouted this is MAGA country or something and, and according to one of the news reports I saw they had a rope newest or something and so it was it, it, you know it, a little bit of research and you can see through it right away that they were trying to you know what I mean it's bad on to conservative people you know and stuff and all that so this young man. An overprivileged, you know, American was, and and it came out in the news story. I was listening to Rush Limbaugh, and he, and he's, and that, you know, he reads all the news stories and he condenses it. And so it was something about he didn't like the money he was being paid, so he was he tried to, you know, use this fake episode to get more money, and now it's already having. You know, career ramifications on on him, and I just what a perfect example of of the self centered reprobate people of the world. You know, Romans eight verse eight. So that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And the verse before it, verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity is against God, for it is not subject to the law, neither indeed can be. And the verse before that, even verse 6 of Romans 8, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I just thought, what a perfect example of self-centered, reprobate behavior. It's all about me, 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 me. It's not about you. Drop what you're doing and attend to me, because it's all about me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and it's really, you know, I heard about this while I was at work several days ago, and it's right when the, you know, right when the story first, first broke, um, and, you know, there was a, a few years ago, there was another, uh, there was some actress on her show, um, called, there was, there was, there was, Several years ago, a similar incident happened, but I don't think that this alleged incident got violent. It was the actress on that show Empire on Fox, and she's African American, which I, I mean, I really don't like that terminology. It seems like we're all, if, if you were born in America, aren't you just yeah. an American? I mean, aren't yeah. you just an American? I mean, people don't call me a European. <laughs> No pun right. intended, right. American. I mean, you know, we're all Americans here, allegedly. But yeah, I mean, 
You know, this is just the old divide and conquer tactic is what it is. And what's so impressive about it, to be honest with you, is how the Central Intelligence Agency has created this created this paradigm in which they have pitted one side of the country against the other. And really, Trump and Hillary Clinton, I mean, these people are all in bed together. I mean, all these people are friends. It's just the dumb, you know, it's just the dumb island sheep like me and us who, you know, <laughs> just fall for it. You know, they, yeah. they and they just, you know, let us stray by all of it. And really, yeah. I mean, they're just playing us is all they're doing. And, you know, in America, you know, this, this, this fellow is, is an African American and he's homosexual. And you know, in America, we have it better than they have it in other countries. If he was any, in the, if he was in an Islamic country, they would have stoned him to death for being homosexual. You know, right. was, you know, and, and the right. and the they throw parade here. They throw parade in this country. <laughs> and the liberal and the liberal feminist women in America are so hypocritical, you know, they're all about, you know, it's my choice and I'm going to kill my baby and all this. But, we, but you don't hear them saying anything about about women being abused in third world Islamic countries and stuff and about homosexuals being thrown off the top of buildings in Islamic countries and stuff like that. It's, you know, the, the side right. Us on the oppression of women in the third world and Islamic countries, it speaks a lot. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And, you know, feminists, you know, Mao and Stalin and Adolf Hitler, allegedly, which I really don't know, yeah. about, you know how much about the Holocaust that I really buy into, but uh -huh. know, what, feminists, what feminism has done in this country makes those men blush. It makes people oh, yeah. like that blush. They have killed more human beings, unborn, defenseless children, by yeah. the millions in this country. You know, and people wonder why things are are in the shape that they're in. I mean, I believe that we are witnessing the judgment of God upon this country and upon Western culture, and it's only going to progressively get worse as God fulfills all things. Because we are, you know, we're in the last days. I mean, we can see this being played out daily. Yeah, I think so. I agree. I definitely agree, you know. Um, there's a song, I'm trying to remember what it was, that um, lift up not thy horn and speak not with a loud voice or a stiff neck, for God is the one for promotion cometh not from the east or the west or the south or the north, but God set us one up, put us one down and set up another. And so, you know, these people in power, they think that they got to where they are by their own effort. Wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me see if I can find that. Let me see if I can find that. But yeah, it's just amazing what's going on in the world and the potsherds of the earth are striving against one another, you know, because you put two self-centered people with opposing wills together in a room and it's going to be very interesting to say the least. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Well, let's see. But anyway, go ahead, brother Paul, for a minute. Let's see if I can find this verse on you. On uh, Bible Gateway. Let's see. Bible Gateway. Huh? So Bible Gateway, yeah, I've used that before. It's a good one. I like it. They have all yes, the sir. different translations, but of course, I only stick with the King James. Yeah. Yes, let's, let's see. Yes. Uh, uh, horn. Let's see. Let's see if that comes up. Oh, let me try. Let me try something else. Ah, oh, here we go. I'll try this. 
uh, up uh, horn. Let's see, or speak for the business. See, there we go, there we go. Psalm 75, 5, that should be it now. Let's see, uh, da, da, da. see there we go, there we go. There it is, there we go. Psalm 75, verse 5 to 7. Oh God, verse, Psalm 75, verse 5 of 6 to 7. Yeah, I'm there. You got it? I'm you there. Got it? Yes, All right. Yeah. Verse 5. In the authorized King James Version, of course, verse 5, lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Verse 6, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the north, south. Verse 7, that God is the judge. He putteth down one and set us up another. There it is, straight up. Yes, and this is talking about what I, you know, what I began the, the fellowship tonight talking about, you know, about my personality yeah. and I want, and that I didn't want to be loud and voiceful or, you know, boisterous. And right here, you know, right here in verse five, that's what this is speaking of. Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Don't be boastful and loud over everybody right. else and hold your neck out like you're you know like you're so proud and you know everything you know yeah and then i'm re i'm reminded of that other scripture um it's i think it's in the old testament for what does thou have that thou did not receive right it's, yeah do you know that one yes sir give me just a minute let me see if i can find it yeah, let me see. I'll go for what does have? Let's see. For what? Uh, uh, have. See, that should bring it up. No, no, let's see. That. Uh, in. <laughs> Is it First Corinthians four seven? That could be it. Let's see. I think it's First Corinthians four seven. You got it. You got it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And James version. Yes, that's it. First Corinthians four seven. Mm -hmm. it make it to differ from another. And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? That is what. That yeah, you know, real. I mean, I was, I was, I was witnessing to some guys at work the other night, and uh, uh -huh. you know, I was, and uh, I began to talk about, you know. You know, being in control of our own, you know, of our so-called own destiny. And, you know, I was just, you know, I just posed a question to him, you know, like this verse 7 here in First Corinthians 4 says, you know, for how make it either different from another, or, or what has thou that thou did not receive? I mean, we receive our life from God. We did not birth ourselves into this world. So what makes any of us think that we are in control of our own lives? Now, that does not yeah. give us an excuse to just throw caution to the wind and say, oh, I'm not in control, so whatever happens is going to happen. That's not what, that's not yeah. what I believe it is. All right. Faith, you know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fatalistic attitude of resignation, you know. Oh, well, whatever happens, just sit here like a bump on the log and do nothing and, and and if I do not, and if I sit here and do nothing, maybe nothing bad will happen to me. Oh, it'll it'll come looking. Trouble will come looking for you. Unfortunately, in this right. world, yeah. Oh, you know, really. And then there's also the attitude of, you know, well, I don't have time for Jesus right now. I'll just give him a try some other time. You know? Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, until the Spirit of God, you know, reveals to you 
what you are. I mean, it's only then that you're going to understand that, you know, it's not about making a decision for Christ. Yeah, you know, yeah. People, people have this attitude. Um, I'm, I'm too busy living my life when I, when I'm, when I'm old and gray and and all used up and worn out. Then I'll come to Jesus. You know, it reminds me of the other one in the New Testament where the guy who the the rich young man. Oh, I need big bonds. I know what I'll do. I will tear down my bonds and build bigger ones and. And then, and then God came to him and said, "You fool! This night your soul will be required of thee. And then, who will get all the things that thou hast so selfishly stored up for thyself?" That's got to be in the New Testament somewhere. One of the Gospels, I'm pretty sure on that one. Let's see. Let's see the parable of the rich young man. Let's see. Let me try that. Let's see the story of the rich young man. Let's see. There we go. Let's see. Uh, da -da. Is that it? Let's see. Matthew 19, is that it? Let's see, Matthew 19, I think that's it. Oh, no, that's a different one. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see, I'll find it in a minute. Let's see. I know what to type in there. He required of this. There we go. There we go. Luke twelve twenty. There we go. Got it. Luke chapter twelve, verse twenty. You guys still there? Yes, I'm here. I got it. Luke 12 in the King James. Luke 12, 20. Let's go back. Let's put a range of verses. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go 17 to 24. Let's see what that brings up. Luke chapter 17. Oh, yeah, that's it. Let's see. Luke chapter 12. Oh, yeah, it starts in verse 16 of Luke 12. Verse 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Verse 17, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bonds and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. There's that famous phrase. And then in verse 20. Here comes, here comes reality intruding on him. Verse 20, but God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? And then verse 21, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And then verse 22, and he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. And then verse 23, the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. 
And then he goes into the ravens and the flowers and all of that. And which of you, by taking thought, can add a stature, a cubit to your stature and all that. But this example, this, this illustration here of the man, it's a perfect picture of, of the unregenerate people of the world chasing after the dollar and chasing after the modern idols of jobs and status and careers and cars and houses and and friends and all of the stuff that money can buy like it says elsewhere in scripture money answers all things and then right. you know people chasing after the dollar with no thought of god in it's in their head you know this is this is a good picture of the unregenerate people of the world chasing after their god the dollar right and you know the ones that actually accomplish their so-called dreams or which actually turn out to be nightmares or <laughs> yep. or what have you i mean you know we're told in scripture that you know they have their reward you know oh yes it's like you know, we were talking about right i mean you know it's like we're you know we've been talking about john MacArthur and rick warren and oh yeah and joel Osteen has been mentioned you know and all these all these fake yep. creatures i mean you know they, you know, these men have their reward already. You know. Yep, that's right. They have it already. Yep. All right. Yeah, hey, uh, here's an interesting something I got to do a couple of days ago. I had it had it on my mind now for a while. I don't know. I guess I say a while. It's a couple. I think about a month or so. And um. Prophets, um, the power of prophecy ministries, Tex Mars ministry, Tex Mars, he's really retired now. So, um, uh, but anyway, you know, I've, you know, bought a couple of Tex Mars books in the past. And so they send me every month a little bulletin that's got, you know, articles in it. And so, and, you know, I always read, you know, read through them. And most of the time they have pretty interesting articles in there about Zionism and about stuff that's going on in false religion going on in you know in our country so uh but they have a logo on it and the logo on it it's obviously been on there for years it's the logo on their website as well um it's a picture of the globe the like blue marble image that's been proven fake and it's like got a and it's and it's got like a cross behind it and a and a dove, which are pretty common Christian themes, I guess, except for the globe. But so I called Power of Prophecy Ministries, I think it was Tuesday, and uh -huh. I and I got to speak with Jerry Barrett. And it's uh, four of the, it's four of these people run the ministry now and I actually got to speak with Jerry Barrett and I had a forty five minute conversation with him on the phone and you know, I asked him about biblical, and I asked him about biblical cosmology, and you know, um, he said that you know, and he, you know, he, you know, he referred to it as flat Earth, and you know, I tried to explain to him how you know I didn't, how I didn't like the terminology flat Earth, you know, that the Earth wasn't flat in the sense of falling off the edge of it, that you know, you had mountains and hills and valleys and rivers and you know, oceans. So I go into you know, I go into this talk with him and. Yeah, and uh, I asked him to search the scriptures with me, and he did. Yeah. And he opened up his Bible, and I opened up mine, and we went through, you know, and we went through several, you know, several different verses. You know, we actually went through Jeremiah chapter thirty-one, we went four, went through Second uh, Corinthians chapter fourteen, um, ah. and some more, and and some more verses, and I actually had a you know really, really civil conversation with him about it. Um, you know, and I just and I and I just stress to him, you know, that it was important that us as believers to believe the whole word of God and not just pick and choose what we're going to believe out of it. And um, I just right. to him, you know, how important that biblical cosmology is. And you know, I showed him in Jeremiah 31 where the Lord says, you know, if the heavens can be measured and the foundations of the earth discovered, then I'll remember your sin and cast you off. And he, and, you know, he, and he and he and you know he acknowledged that in scripture and um you know i just brought up to him look you know i don't expect you guys to you know 
but leave me without the Holy Spirit opening you guys' eyes up. And I don't want you to think that I'm attacking you, but this, this image of this globe that you have on the bulletin that you send out, I said, you really need to, you know, seek God about this, because I'm going to tell you my opinion, and, and in my opinion, this is a satanic image, and it represents Satan's kingdom. It's time for us as believers to separate ourselves from it. And so, I, I mean, I thought it was a really good conversation. It was about a 45-minute one, and I just pray that he receives it in the spirit that it was intended by the grace of God. Hey, can I, can I, can I, can I I make a comment? (laughs) I hope so. I wish you'd jump in here with us. I was just going to ask you to speak up for a minute. Well, I appreciate that. I I just wanted to kind of share some information with everyone regarding uh, Tex Mars and Wanda, his wife. You know, Tex has been very ill, and, you know, we do need to remember them in prayer. Uh, as you all probably know, um, you know, um, Tex Mars did a forward in one of Edward's books, and uh, that resulted in Tex Mars and Brother Ed becoming very close. And and as a result, as I was reading through some of Tex's materials, I became very concerned. Uh, because most people know that Tex Mars has been pretty much um, into the doctrine of free will most of his life. And, um, wow. and so anyway, um, I, I pointed out to Brother Ed that, you know, look, this guy is, he doesn't believe in, he, he gives lip service to election, but he doesn't believe in a completed salvation. He believes in a possibility salvation. And so right, I right. show I showed Ed, you know, uh, where he actually was presenting this in some of his material. Well, you know how Ed is. <laughs> so Ed called up Ed called up <laughs> Tex Mars and had a very lengthy conversation with 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 Tex. And, you know, uh-huh. about two weeks later, I got a, and I'm just sharing this with our audience, it shows that how God can work in the hearts and lives of people. About two weeks later, I got an uh, email from Brother Ed, and he says, have you listened to Texas messages lately? And I said, no, I haven't had time. He says, he's preaching predestination election now. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And so, anyway, I do, I do think that God is working in the hearts of Tex, and and I've sent him a number of books of my books, and um, and I've had a good conversation and some correspondence with his wife Wanda, and so I have their email. That's why I send them information. So I just wanted to give you guys that little bit of information. Ed has been very faithful in proclaiming the truth, yes. the truth to uh, Brother Tex Mars. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, and uh, Brother Larry, I did get your email about uh, about our get-together in April. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Because I meant to call uh, Brother Matt here in California last Saturday, the 16th. But I've got to call, I've got to call him on, Friday, on Saturday, the 23rd, and see if he knows his work schedule for early April. Because I'm going to... I got to call Brother Matt on Saturday and see if he knows his work schedule for early April. Because if I can't, if I ha- if I can't go with him, I'm gonna go on the Greyhound. Okay. Like, and like I, I already looked it up. There's a Greyhound terminal in Joplin. That's so great. That's if I only. Don't go with Brother Matt. I'll go on the Greyhound. Well, that Greyhound. So to... that, yeah, that Greyhound. But. About uh, April. Yeah, that Greyhound bus terminal is only about 35, 40 minutes from my house. So uh, that'll be very convenient. Okay. That'll be a nice little ride up for. Uh, we're getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Every once in a while. I'm going to call. Go ahead. Again on Saturday and see if he knows his work schedule yet. 
Okay, so, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, yeah, I, I invite everyone, uh, if you can come, come and see us 6th, 7th, and 8th. Brother Edward Henry is going to be speaking, and Brother if Carl and Babs, Brother Carl and Babs can make it, uh, he knows he is uh, on the agenda to speak, as well as Brother Mark Kennedy. And I've asked, Wonderful. I've asked a couple of other people also to come and speak for us. I'm still waiting to hear back from them to see if they're able to uh, uh, come. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, it's a wonderful time of people getting together. Um, Sister Louise, yeah. Sister Louise Dreves has been out here twice to the fellowships with us, and uh, nice. so you know, it's going to be. Uh, and I invite the women folk as well. There's there's nice accommodations within 15 minutes of our place here. Nice uh, nice motels, hotels, whatever. So anyway, thanks for bringing that up and letting me announce that. Sure, sure, yeah. Oh, so there's good hotels in downtown Pineville and stuff. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Uh, I said there's okay, okay. I said there's good motels <laughs> and hotels within fifteen to twenty minutes of us, okay? <laughs> Pineville okay. Pineville is a podunk town, you know. And uh, uh -huh. we live at the end of the world, but we're within fifteen uh -huh. we're within fifteen minutes, uh twenty minutes of Rogers, Arkansas, Bella Vista, Arkansas, Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh -huh. The capital of Walmart, mm -hmm. the the corporate the corporate headquarters of Walmart. Now, don't let that keep you away, okay? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh, so that's the other direction. Yes, yes. South, right? There's always a Walmart around, isn't it? Oh, Walmart over here, you know, Walmart's on every corner. It's kind of like the First Baptist churches. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. guess where I, I mean, hey, listen to the irony of this. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, grow, all right, growing up in the Church of God denomination like I did before I moved out of my mother's house, I think I was like 16 whenever I moved out of her house. Um, but, you know, she was, you know, she was United Pentecostal for a while and then moved to Church of God denomination. And going in and out of these Church of God churches, like on the signs, like on the marquee outside, you know, it would always say, you know, headquarters, Cleveland, oh. Tennessee. <laughs> well, in, in 2016, when the Lord moved me and my wife from Louisiana to Tennessee, that's where he brought us. <laughs> 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 I live like, like 15 minutes from Cleveland, Tennessee, which is the headquarter of the Church of God denomination. Let me wow. tell you something. They're everywhere up here. Yeah, uh, but, all it is wow. is free will works idolatry everywhere you go. It's, and I just, you know, God, He has such a sense of humor. I think. And well, He put you. <laughs> he, he, mission, yeah. he put you. That's your mission yeah. field. That's your mission field, brother. <laughs> 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 you know, Babs. Babs. Oh, yeah. Babs was was mentioned of that to Rosette. Rosette said, "Wow, do you know they have, they have." Bab said they have like 52 churches around them. And I go, oh, wow. That's a lot of free willism going on. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a lot. Perry, look, Perry Stone's uh, church is here. His like international ministries office wow. is a big, uh, big theater over there. It's <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awful. 52 church, church of God churches. Six, wow. All the other. Wow. So it's like Mecca. It's like Yeah, it's the Mecca. Mecca. It's like the charismatic Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 Pentecostal Vatican of Tennessee. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, yeah. this is for the the, the women folk. Uh, and you may have seen it because I sent it out. Sister Louise sent out, she's been uh, thinking a lot about the issue of how we should properly uh, respond to biblical teaching that may cause us some grief, you know. And she, sent, she, she, she wanted to do a topic on, you know, how 
can we best be Bereans? And I, I think that's a really good topic. So I, I presented it to Brother Ed, and he's he's going to be talking about that on Monday night. And I want to welcome or, or let all the lady folks know, we want you to be a part of any um, questions you have or suggestions that you have for topics, if you will send it to us in a email format, uh, we'll take it up with the brethren. And, and because we are we are interested in your input uh, very much, Sister Louise, um, it was very well thought out, and she has been in a struggle over this issue about how to. Uh, you know, she 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 has shared some things with me. You know, if somebody shares something and it's the Holy Spirit starts dealing with a person on it, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you have to you have to you have to come under the authority of the Bible. I mean, you know, and it's 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 not it's not. I'm not saying it's easy. I I'm talking to myself. You know, uh, when someone point, uh, yeah. points out something to me, so. Anyway, I want to I want to let all the the lady folks know that if you have anything on your heart, uh, where that you want to be brought up in our teachings, or you have questions, feel free to send myself or Mark or Carl your questions or concerns, and we will we will address those. So, yes, yes, I have that email from Sister Louise in in the in the email you forwarded with the possible topic. Right. I'll I'll look it over. Right. That's right. good. Though. Yeah, I think it's a yeah, and I, and personally, you know, I think it's a great topic as well. I think it definitely is something that needs to be addressed, especially with um, you know, stuff that's been going on the last several days. I think <laughs> it's gonna you know benefit all of us to search the scriptures together and prove all things to be true by the grace of God. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. By the way. Um, here I go again, um, but <laughs> I talked to Ed Henry today, and he uh, and, and you guys have this in your emails as well. But he thinks that one of the key things that we need to address, he is not going to be able to be with us on the fourth of March, but he'll be back. He'll be he'll be back the twenty. He'll be here the twenty fifth to discuss these uh -huh. topics that Louise has brought up. But on the 11th of March, he wants to, he sent a teaching out in response to a brother, I'm not going to mention his name, but this brother basically, uh, I was amazed because Brother Ed spent a lot of time going through <clears throat> verse by verse explaining the proper understanding of the Israel of God. And... Mm -hmm. Anyway, this person, you know, he, he might not say he didn't lamb blast, but I call it lamb blasting, both me and Ed, because he came back and, and said, you're not, you, you are not, you must not be serving the same Lord I'm serving. Well, he's basically calling me a reprobate, okay, uh, because of Ed's um, explanation of these scriptures, and he's not only mm -hmm. he's not only casting me under the the boat, so to speak. He's <laughs> uh, since we got a boat captain, I'll use that. But he's also casting Michael oh. or, or uh, Ed under the boat, you know. And I called oh. up Ed and I said, wow. "Hey, I said when you see this email, you know, don't be offended." I said, "He says no. I get those all the time." He said they're so immersed in dispensational. Uh, theology, he said, and, and he said, when you point out the truth to them regarding the subject, regarding the seed of Christ, regarding it's not of the flesh, regarding it's, you know, it, when it's using that text that says, if you say, if you curse Israel, God's going to curse you, and if you, he says, that is taken totally out of, I says, yeah, I know it, Brother Michael, I said, I, Brother Ed, I says, I've gone through that with this brother over and mm -hmm. over, so, the reason I'm pointing this out is that that is going to be discussed, the proper uh, understanding of the Israel of God. And I think, and, and the, the challenge with all the, do you know now that I saw in, in, in Europe today, they have, they have now, they have now passed 
laws stating that people who take positions against Zionism are anti-Semitic. When you oh, can't yeah. even talk against Zionism in Europe without wow. without take, getting re, rep, retribution, legal retributions against you, kind of like uh, Holocaust deniers in Europe. So uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to bring that up, and uh, we, we are going to see if we take a strong stand for biblical um, mm -hmm. understanding regarding this issue and come against Zionism, even in the United States yeah. with, with Donald Trump, taking such such a position you can't look i am not anti-semitic i am not against the right. jews okay but i am against right. zionism and when they start saying that Z taking a position against zionism you're anti-semitic that's larry phillips okay I, I i will stand up against the false doctrines of zionism anyway i didn't mean to get off mm -hmm. on a rant but i did want to share that with you that's upcoming on <laughs> right, and you know, and, and you know, I mean, we're you know, we're told in Scripture in the Book of Romans who the Jews are. Right, and we're told that that a Jew is not one that is one outwardly, but one that is one inwardly. So everybody that is born again of the Spirit, no matter where they're from, Ethiopia, okay. Texas, Canada, right. Venezuela, if you're if you're born again, you are a Jew. All right, this is a circumcision of the spirit, and for anybody to say otherwise, like was said in that email, is so that is I just find it so sad on so many levels. Right. Number one, this person is not is not searching the scriptures to improve in all things. He is going after the traditions of men, and number two, right. to uh, to issue an ad hominem attack on Brother Ed, which is basically what that was. I won't mention the comment that he made, but that's uh -huh. what that was. I mean, and, you know, we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. Amen. You know, Amen. Zacchaeus, you know, Zacchaeus who climbed up in the tree was a publican. Uh, he was a Roman tax collector. You know, so was Matthew. I mean, I yep. was a homeless junkie. I was a homeless junkie on the streets. My own family wouldn't help me. My mother and father both just took me. I was all alone. That's where I deserved to be. I had a needle. And I was shooting up drugs into my arm, and I was homeless. But you know what? Wow. God have mercy on me. God have mercy Praise on me God. and save me, just like he did that. He is, and, and you know, like he does everybody. And to bring up somebody's profession, like, I, I just find that very ugly and very sad. And I'm yes. very disappointed yes. that that happened that way. Yes. It's that's that's amazing that this whole Zionist movement is using the accusation of anti-Semitism as a cudgel to club you over the head into silence. That's right. That's um, right. That yes. yes. The fact that that tactic still works with all the information that is available right today in the Word of, you know, just in the Word of God alone, just being able to open the Word of God and see where it talks about the synagogue of Satan. You know, we see you know, we see in Joshua's day, in the book of Joshua, where these people who are the ones today that we're referring to, you know, that, that you know, snuck into the camp. They, you know, they they changed their dress up and they appeared to be poor and beggarly and without anything. And the Israelites absorbed them amongst them. Well, that's, that was the, that, you know, those people became the Pharisees. All right. And this is what we can find in Scripture. And for people not to search these things out and prove them to be true, well, there I go. I'm probably getting excited again. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's just sad. Well, yeah. I I would say this that you know after doing quite extensive research and study on the history of this subject, uh, I want to I want to guardedly say this. Um, I want to I want to be careful the way I word it, but the line share of those who say they are Jews, meaning that they are in the bloodline, uh, they're Shumai, in other words, they're in the bloodline of Abraham. The line share of the people that reside in the Middle East in Israel are not, okay? They are not. Right. And you can, you can do a study in history on that. And by the way, who does that represent?
represents in Revelation what it says, they are of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and they are not. Okay, that is the that is the line share of people that are living right now in in Israel and are saying that they are something that they are not. And by the way, uh, over you know these people did not used to live there. Okay, there, that's another mm. fault. That's another false premise that. These people returned to their homeland. No, they were never there in the first place. I don't want to get off the subject, but what I'm trying to point out is you can go back biblically to the Bible, and you can find out really yeah. what is going on. And by the way, these, pe right. these people that are holding that they're God's chosen people, how, I'll, I'll just repeat my, what my dad told me when I was 12 years old. Larry, how can they be God's chosen people when they've rejected the Messiah. Right, right, and th right, and think, okay, and let me settle down, and, <laughs> and think about it this way, okay, all right, think about how racist that is. Yes. But yet, th th those people are allowed to engage in that racism to the whole known world, and then have us defend their racism for them. That's right, and also, right, right? and also, fun because, right, because and right. also, they're saying that they are God's chosen people based on the, based on their skin color. And not that only racism. not only that, but they also want us to fund all of their wars and spend, send them thirty eight billion dollars. We've sent them through this. Actually, we have committed treason by by spending all yeah. of this money on foreign entities. That's treason according to the Constitution. And 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 that now they now they passed a law to say that anyone that says anything against Israel, you know, they 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 pass these non boycott laws. And so yeah yeah I can I can get pretty wound up on this. But the thing of it is, it, it's a spiritual issue. That's the thing we have to remember. These people are Luciferian. They're Talmudist. They're Kabbalist. They are worshiping Satan. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. You know, the wicked flee when none pursue it, and these people have to insulate themselves from any criticism at all. You know, it's like you, you know, you, you know, you go into the house and not mine, at least not right now. But, I, but I've, you know, been in homes before to where you walk in there in the dark after midnight and flip the light on and these boys, those, those cockroaches you just scatter. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a, you know, it's a similar thing. All right. Then these people must, they got to protect themselves from any criticism whatsoever because they're so vile and wicked. Yeah. I mean, and it's, uh, you know, Donald yeah. Trump, all right, Donald Trump and his family, okay, you know, it's no coincidence how Barack Obama, Barack Obama, who's married to a man, pretending to be a woman, they bring uh, people yeah. in office, and they use him while he's in office to light the White House up in the rainbow colors and make gay marriage legal and all this transgenderism stuff. And it's not that I believe you can be transgender because you can't, all right? <laughs> and, now, and now Trump. And they bring Trump in and they move the embassy to Jerusalem. And they're doing all these things through these men who are just tools that to have the illusion of power. Donald Trump doesn't run anything. All right. right. He's just he's just a hired hand. That's oh, right. Yes. That's right. He, you know, the stuff and what and who ultimately runs this stuff is Satan. That's right. Yeah. All right. That's who's running this. And we got to, you know, like I told you, you know. Brother Jerry the other day, you know, brother, we have to, it's time for us to expose the works of darkness. We got to stand on the word of God, no matter what happens. And we got to have faith that, you know, God is going to, uh, that, you know, God's going to give us the, the grace to endure persecution whenever it comes, because it's coming. And let Amen. me, let me, let me, uh, let me jump in. I was talking to brother Ed. He wanted to know, because uh, there's a person who keeps sending me instant messenger messages saying, quote, now this is a person that used to fellowship with me, okay? He's been to our fellowships okay. in the past, okay? And he sends me a, a instant message saying, do not murmur against second causes. 
Do you know what that, do you know, I'm going to interpret that what that means in the sovereign grace churches. Do not murmur against second causes. What that means is you, you can't speak against evil because God is sovereign over evil. You can't speak against Zionism because God is the sovereign. Do you see how absolutely asinine that kind of logic is? We are told in the Bible we are to take a stand against evil. Scripture tells us that there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and that God is going to send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie. This is the lie. Don't murmur against second causes. Give me a break. We are to take a stand against evil. Yes, God is sovereign over evil. God is orchestrating everything that goes on, including us taking a stand against it. <laughs> you know, by the way, um, Ephesians 5.11, all right, it says, I'm going to read a verse and start in verse Start in verse 8 down through 11, Ephesians 5, 8 through 11, and authorized King James Version only. Verse 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So we're there told is. to improve and expose the works of darkness. So Amen. that whole argument is completely stupid. No, uh, no, no. I want, I want, I want, I want to, I want to warn you, brother Carl. Minutes. Don't, don't murmur against second causes now, brother. <laughs> and when I get but, that, know, I just have you know, to. I just, I do the same thing yeah. you do. I just, I think this has got to be the most stupid, idiotic asinine kind of logic you know it reminds yeah. me of people's interpretations of romans 13 again right <laughs> right and you know what and whenever you do that you are denying the truth of god in unrighteousness that's right what you doing and, and man thank you brother Carl. you into that verse ephesians 5 11 i was thinking of that verse and you got it. Thank you, Brother Carl. Amen. Anyway, All glory to Jesus Christ. And and what these people are doing, the uh, the 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 uh, Israel lobby, it's it's a double standard because what they're effectively saying is, oh, we can charge you with anti-Semitism, racism, whatever is they want. But you can't do it. We can do it to you, but you can't do it to us. It's a double standard what they're doing. That's right. That's yes. right. You yes. know, so I can flee with them for two. I heard something. The other, I heard something the other day, guys, that just, I mean, it, it, it shocked me to the core. And I, I you guys may have heard it too. I, I don't even remember where I, I was. I was watching something. And it was all of these. It was all, all of these leftist Marxist uh, stooges that uh, are part of this international banking cabal. And this guy was on there, and he was he was saying, "You know what? We've got to come again." He goes, "You know what? We've got to come against people." You know, he says, "One of the first places we need to start is to come against people that saying that we're not a globe. That's where we need to start." Whoa. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's amazing. Oh, that's a, so he, yeah. he thinks out specifically the, the, so he singled out flat earthers specifically. Yes. And, and, uh, and, and any, anybody that holds a biblical cosmology, he said, you know, he said, yeah. because these people, we know, that these people are the ones that are way out there in left field, is what he said. We know that they have no credibility. They have, they have, they lack any kind of credibility in the scientific world. And he said, because uh, they are, they are fringe elements. We need to eliminate them from the mainstream of society. That was his logic. You know, I'm, you know, 
I've said this before, you know, and the serpent's crafty. Yes. Uh, he's, you know, and, you know, one of the things that we have to recognize, you know, as human beings, you know, is that, you know, first of all, for us to recognize in Scripture that it is true, right? And, right, and right. what are we told? That we don't, that, you know, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, to, to grab a hold of that by grace of God and let that take and believe that and to acknowledge that we're in a spiritual battle, you know, in doing so, you have to, you know, a, you know, acknowledge a couple of things, which is one, you know, we're not wise. You know, we're not as wise and crafty as Satan. Right. And he has constructed a system. He's, he is so crap. He has constructed a system that, that makes anybody that rejects it, like us, look insane to right. the outside world. Right. You know? Yeah. And, I mean, I am perfectly happy. I mean, I hope that I just look completely, you know, I hope that I look more insane by the day if that's the case. That's fine with me. Well, you know, we're in good, we're, we're in really, we're, we're in really good company, brothers. I mean, they call, what did they say about Christ? They said that he was, right. they, they, him the yeah. Right. And and they did that with all yeah. of the they did that with all of his followers. I mean, they killed every one of his followers except John. They boiled him in oil. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that's what the truth of God does to men. All right. I mean, that's why that's why all of these Christians were martyred. All right. That's the, right. The that's gospel right. itself, which is the entire word of God, everything from biblical cosmology to salvation by grace alone. Men hate it. That's People right. hate it. You know it. I mean, but we're you know, but let's just like you know, we just tell us you know we can. It's you know we are blessed to be able to count ourselves worthy to start to suffer persecution in His name. Amen. And by Amen. the grace of God. I welcome it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it's only by his grace. It's, it's 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 by his grace that we're even talking tonight. So <laughs> you know. yes, well listen, we're coming up it, on that hour went by awful awful fast, six fifty five. Yeah. And I really have enjoyed this fellowship. Uh you guys uh, brought a lot of excellent points to the fore. And um I I just I've come to really enjoy this call probably more than anyone else because i get i get to right. i get to hear other people's <laughs> other people's uh input um i just got and i'll send it to you guys i'll send it to carl and and um mark uh yeah i i because i cannot believe i just got two threads of conversation from two doctors that have been in argument with Edward Henry. One guy has five degrees, okay, and says he's a Christian, wow. and says he's a Christian, and and is literally maligning Brother Edward Henry. And Edward Henry proves that he's an outright liar, okay, in his in his logic. I'll, I'll send you this. And when you when okay. you when you read through these thirteen lines of conversation in two different emails. If if the same thing happens to you that happened to me, you're gonna your mouth's gonna be just dropping open because I mean Ed just took the Bible and took true science and proved every single point. And these people that have five doctors, I mean major major players, okay, had no uh -huh. argument other than ad hominem attacks against him. That's all they had. That's all they had. Yeah. So, anyway, because that's right. That's right. That's all they have, brother. That's all they have. But you know what? They don't have the truth on their side. You that's know right. What we do by the grace of God, and that should give us a spirit of boldness yes. by the grace of God. But yes. and you know what? And, and and let's not be bold in ourselves, but let's be bold that's in right. Christ, which that's, is truth. That He's right. given us by His grace. Amen. 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 Well, listen, I I appreciate you guys coming on tonight. And I, I'm looking forward to next Thursday night already. <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, uh, I'm going to bring this call to kind of a close here. And 
anyway, I'm going to just, the last three minutes, I'm going to turn it over to you guys and shut up. Anyway, I wanted to, yeah, they, they said, they said that Christ had a demon. Yeah. Like you were talking about for the crowd, how the word of God will make us look like crazy people to this evil world. They said Christ had a demon, didn't they, Brother Carl? That's right, Brother Mark. They did. They did. And so, and also, Christ said that they hated him, and they're going to hate us, too. He said they hated me before they hated, hated you, so they're going to hate you, too. So he, give, he gives us fair warning. It's wonderful how Christ prepares us for the worst so that we know it's coming and it doesn't catch us by surprise. That's awesome. Yes, sir. It is. Um, well, that's up for this moment. It's been really good. I've thoroughly enjoyed this, this uh, fellowship call. Yeah, me too, bro, Mark, bro, Larry. Um, I just want to read a few verses here of scripture out of Psalm 28, verses 7 through 9. Um, and I'll say one more time, you know, I love you. You know, me and Babs love you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we thank the Lord for you. And let's just remember that the Word of God, um, the Bible, is our sole authority for all truth. And instead of seeking sources outside of God, you know, and outside of His Word, you know, let's just remember to prove all things true and to, and to test it in Scripture before we go after it because we got to be very careful. Amen. got to be very careful. Um, verses 7 through 8 in Psalm 28. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointing. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. See them also and lift them up forever. And I'll just close with a quote by Martin Luther. Peace is possible and truth at all costs. Amen. Well, guys, I appreciate it. And I want to thank again all of our Facebook friends. We've had a number of people join us since uh, I last announced. So we've had a really good group come on. I appreciate all the comments that Ashley has made. Ashley's getting ready to head back from the Philippines to Australia. Uh, you're in our prayers. We hope you have a, a blessed trip back, brother. Robert Cherry, Dennis Patrick, Stephen Merrick, and all the rest that have joined us as well. So with that, uh, we will be having uh, our Sunday, mor Sunday morning and Sunday evening services, and then we will be back with Brother Ed Henry on Monday night. With that, I'm going to say good night and God bless. God bless. Bye, Brother Mark. Yeah, bye, Brother Carl. Love you. Good night, Tom. Recording pot. Yes, good night, Bob. Right. Good night, Babs. And good night, Rosette. Good night. <laughs> Your line has been disconnected by the moderator. Goodbye. Again, thank you all of our Facebook friends as well. God bless.